Okay, number one, right? Become the person you're looking for. Guys, we all want people to go to meetings, to do big retail, to be on ITS, MLM services, whatever you call it. Read the books, lead generate. Well, if you're looking for those people, you've got to become that person first. You can't expect anyone else to do what you're not doing. So make sure you've done big retail, you go into the meetings and you're reading the books and you're lead generating. That is vitally important. Now, we all know network marketing, don't we? Five by five by five. We've seen that in all the books, the pay plan, the pay plan pays five wide, five deep. We're looking for five people. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're looking for five people and one superstar. And you know the best thing, guys, is you have found that superstar. That superstar is you. We're looking for five people, one superstar. You have found the superstar. It is you. And when the penny drops, you'll understand this business is so easy. If you're looking for someone else to build it for you, you're giving the power away. Let's just say you think you've got a superstar in your business. And you, oh yeah, great, I've got one. Six months later, they quit. You're now back to square one. Where when you realize that you are the superstar, you're never going to quit on yourself, so success is guaranteed. Do you understand? If you get someone else to build it for you, success is not guaranteed. But realize the superstar in your business is you. Okay? The next one, mix with the right people. Uh, some of these things, <clears throat> I can't prove they work, okay? Not scientifically, I can't prove it. I just know that they do work. And this is one of them, mix with the right people. Now, in the early days, our team used to say, if you ever want to find Mike and Amanda at a conference, look for the eye earners, and that's where they'll be. Now, this was ages before we were gold distributor. We were nothing in the business. But I would see these people earning a lot of money, and I wanted to be like them. And I knew I had to mix with them if I was going to end up being like them. Now you might say to me, I disagree, how can that work? Okay, put your hand up if you've got children. Put your hand up if you really want your children. Yeah, see, a few hands went down then. <laughs> we understand, we've got teenagers, drive you bonkers. Listen, right, the conference is finished. You're going home. You drive into your street and on the street corner, there's a gang of teenagers. Revving up motorbikes, drinking, smoking, girls with short skirts. You know the kind of thing I'm talking about. Do you run indoors and say to your children, quick kids, quick, all your friends are up on the street corner, go and play. Or do you say, you stay away from them. I don't want to see you mixing with those people. We obviously tell our children to avoid them, don't we? And the reason we do that is because we feel if our children mix with a wrong crowd, they could become like them. Do we all agree? Well, if that's true, then what I've just said about mixing with the right people has got to be true as well. For you to mix with the right people greatly enhances your chance of becoming like them. So tonight at the gala dinner, mix with the likes of Bob Webb, Pete and Jackie, myself and Amanda. Come up and say hello. We do not bite. Ask questions, okay? The next one. Don't worry what other people think of you. Don't worry what other people think of you. Guys, we're building a team of people, okay? The best thing about network marketing is it's a people business. The worst thing about network marketing is it's a people business. Now, as long as you're ethically trying to help your team, I guarantee you'll take knocks along the way. And you can't worry about that. You'll do a training, 99% of the people will love it. 1% will lay right into you because they think you're trying to hurt them and hurt their business. Guys, you can't worry about that. You can't worry about what these people are thinking, okay? As long as you're ethically trying to help them. Friends and family as well. There are friends and family, aren't they? And yet they knock us. Those who go home tonight, your friends, you'll be down a pub tonight and your friends will be saying things like, oh, you're not still doing that clean easy thing. You're not still putting out catalogues. You haven't wasted a day up in Birmingham. Well, there's two things you say to those people, okay? The first one is, okay, how much money have you got in the bank? And when they say, oh, um, um, oh, well, um, uh, nothing really. Well, shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> You'll lose a few friends, but who cares? 
you now mix them with higher earners. So you make new friends, and that's what you want, isn't it? Next one, motivation is the key. Motivation is the key. Now, again, I think this is, this is a big one, right? This is, you need a big reason why, right? Go setting. I'm not about to do a go setting training, but you need to be motivated by go setting. We teach our team um, go posters. I think someone else said it earlier on today. Big poster, sticking on there everything they want, cars, uh, holidays, whatever it is, just get it on that poster. Motivation, I believe motivate, motivation, not education, builds this business. Motivation, not education. And I can prove it, okay, with a story. I was up in my bedroom, and I've got all my books up there, and I'm reading my book. I don't quite know why I'm up there reading my book all the time. I guess nothing else happens in my bedroom. Oh, take pity on me, why don't you? Hold on. Nothing happens in my bedroom. <laughs> well, you saw this. <laughs> hey, after listening to Rob Foster, I put it on my fridge door, and it's still not bloody happened. <laughs> but I guess if you saw the size of my fig leaf, that's why nothing happens. <laughs> Amanda told me, don't talk about that. Seeing you're making me talk about it, you're a bad lot. Anyway, I'm up in my bedroom, right? Well, I've got to say our bedroom. We don't sleep separately or anything. It's, you know, no, we love each other, right? Don't get me started, because once I go, I can't stop. <laughs> Deep breaths. I should have gone. Oof. I was going to, but I didn't have time. Oof. Anyway. I was up in my bedroom, our bedroom. I was up in our bedroom, reading a book, right? And Amanda comes in, and um, she's been moaning for days and days about cutting the grass. Guys, I can't be bothered. You know, I don't want to go out there and cut the grass. Anyway, she walks in this particular day, and she's got a little twinkle in her eye, and she says to me, Mike, <laughs> beg your pardon? She says, Mike, if you cut the grass out there, something might happen in here. Guys, I'm out of that bedroom, I'm downstairs, I'm in the shed, I'm out with the lawnmower, I'm up and down, up and down, up and down. Best looking lawn you've ever seen in your life. Why? My education hasn't got any better. My lawnmower hasn't got any better. My lawn hasn't got any smaller. But I've now got a reason why. <laughs> I'm now motivated. <laughs> ladies, ladies, i tell you one thing. If you want your catalogues put out tomorrow morning, just go up to your men and with a little twinkle in your eye, just say, and out they'll be. There'll be thousands of catalogues everywhere. <laughs> thousands of catalogues. The next one, father, father don't mother your team. Father don't mother. Bit of a strange one, this. And I'm going to tell you another story to kick it off with, okay? I'm sat in the front room and I'm making a few phone calls and I hear all this clattering and banging and whatever coming from our shed. So I go out there and there's Amanda struggling over everything. Now, you've got to understand, Amanda is officially the smallest person in our family, okay? There she is, right? Let's keep that picture up there for a second. There she is, all right? And I say to her, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm getting George's bike out. Now, the lad in the white t-shirt is our George, right? That's our George. He's massive, right? And there's little old Amanda struggling to get the bike out. I said, what? what? George, get over here. So over comes George. I said, look. Move the lawnmower, grab your bike, lift it over that, and away you go. And he does, and he's gone. Now, Amanda mothered him, I fathered him, okay? Amanda wanted to do it for him, I taught him how to do it. And that's the same with your business. It's your job to teach your team how to do this business, not do it for them. It's kind of human nature that you want to do it for them, but you're not helping them. It's like the old story, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And it's the same in this business. We must teach our teams how to do it, not do it for them. Okay? Last one. Let me take another sip of this gin, because it seems to be working. <laughs> know what you have to offer. Listen to me right now. 
Ten years ago, we were sat there, not go distributors, nothing, okay? It doesn't matter what you've done in this business. You've got to talk about the higher earners in the business. Now, for me, I think the best speaker in this clean, easy industry is Rob Foster. And I said, yeah, he deserves a round of applause. Give Rob Foster a round of applause. <clears throat> You see, Rob will stand up here and he'll show you his cars, he'll show you his houses, his holidays, horses and all that kind of thing. And he's not up here being big-headed. Now, if somebody stood up here and said, look at my Ferrari and they're your boss, they're being big-headed. If Bob Webb stands up here and says, look at my Ferrari, he's showing you what you can get from this business. You must understand we are all on the same path as, same path as Rob and as Bob. We can all get what they've got. And there's a, a saying you might want to write down, okay? We're in show business. We're in show business. We must show people what they can get from this business, okay? So when you see people showing all these things, houses, money, cars, they're not up here being big-headed. All they're doing you is showing the path that you are on. Every single one of you in this room can get that. But more importantly, every single one of you can change people's lives so they can get that. And if you can change people's lives with this industry, I'll say this to you. And I'll hit you right between the eyes right now, guys. If you've got the power to change people's lives because of Clean Easy, how dare you? How dare you not share this opportunity? Because just imagine my sponsor said, oh no, I'm not sharing the opportunity. I'd have never changed my life. He would never have changed his life. Understand, when you see people showing houses, cars and money, they're showing you what you can get from this. Know what you've got to offer people. In the early days, I had nothing to offer them. So I used Rob Foster's story, Bob Webb's story, all the higher earner stories. And that's exactly what you've got to do. So don't think they're being big-headed, they're just showing you what you can get from this business. Now a quick summary. Remember, you are the superstar in your business. Mixing with the right people will give you a bigger chance of becoming like them. Don't worry what other people think of you. Make sure you have a big reason why you're doing the business. Teach your team how to do it. Don't do it for them. And remember, you have the power in your hand to change people's lives.